Hi everybody, Scott Kelby here and I am at the Tampa Bay Times Forum in Tampa, Florida where I just finished shooting for three days with the brand new Nikon D7100 and the just about to be released 80 to 400 lens. And what we did was we did a hockey workshop here and we did everything from portraits out on the ice of athletes to shooting game action to doing the whole nine yards for three days and this is the only camera and body I really use for the whole thing except for a couple of comparison shots. And what I wanted to do was rather than give you a review of all the specs, because you can find the specs anywhere, it'll take you five seconds to find out all the specs of this camera, I wanted to give you instead a real world review of what it's really like shooting this thing out in the field. So what I really wanted to know was question number one, how does this thing shoot in low light? That's my big thing because I read a lot of things on the internet and I couldn't, no one was really coming out and say it and I'm going to come out and say it. Okay, for a $1,200 camera body, the low noise is, is amazing. It's not as good as like a D4, you know, it's, it's, it, it's not quite that good. But for the money, it is insane. So here's the thing. I was shooting at 2,500 ISO. I open it full screen on my, on my uh, laptop. I don't see any noise. I'm showing other guys in the workshop. They're like, really, really? 1,200 bucks and you don't see any noise? Now you gotta realize. Full screen, full size screen on my laptop is larger than most anyone's going to see our images because let's face it, where do our images go? Our images wind up on the web. And if they're on the web, very few websites will show our images full screen, right, at full resolution. But at full screen, full resolution, this looks fantastic. If I were to zoom into 100%, you absolutely see noise. You see the typical things that happen when there is noise. You see a, a little bit of lack of contrast, a little bit of lack of sharpness. But overall, I think it does amazingly well. I've never seen a camera in this price range that does noise nearly as well as this does. I would have to say this is the noise champ in the $1,200 range by a long shot. As far as the other features go, what I really liked about it was it kind of keeps the same you know, body and style as the D7000, but it's got a, a couple of upgrades. Uh, I, one is the chip inside. It looks incredibly sharp, especially at lower ISOs, it looks incredibly sharp. At 2500 ISO, it looks amazingly sharp. I shot it at 4000 ISO, still looked good full screen. I shot it at 6400 ISO, full screen on my laptop. You can see a little bit of noise, but that's the key thing. You can just see a little bit of noise. And at the end of the day, who really cares about low noise? Photographers, does the public really care? They don't even notice noise, but we notice noise like mad. But at 6400, I still think it's absolutely acceptable. It's actually pretty darn good. As far as the ergonomic design, it's pretty much the same as the D7000 with just a minor change. The only thing that I would say if, if I had any comment about it was, now you gotta realize I'm used to shooting a D4, that's my main go-to camera, or a D3S. The shutter is, is just a tiny bit soggy compared to those. Not, not slow, I don't feel like a real lag or anything, but it just feels it's not quite as crisp uh, as the D4. But of course, you're talking about a camera that costs four times as much as this one, where that body's around $6,000, this one's only $1,200. So there's quite a difference uh, to get a little less soggier thing. Uh, they've also added a couple minor features to the video stuff. You can, it has a stereo headphone and a headphone jack. I'm not a big video guy, so those didn't matter to me. What really brought it for me was um, the sharpness of the camera, just the innate sharpness of the camera, and also um, high ISO. So I know that a lot of people struggle, they're shooting events and things like that, not just sports, but any kind of event, ballet, theater, whatever it is, and high ISO has been kind of out of their price. I think this camera changes that. I'm not a huge fan of the new dials, the way they've done on the top, but I'm afraid that's not going away anytime soon. So I'm not even gonna gripe about that because that's kind of like the new Nikon thing. But outside of that, the body, well-made, looks good. And every once in a while, they come up with a Nikon camera that has, has all kinds of stuff like a little thing missing that drives you nuts. Got all these great features, but then no, you can't zoom in or all. This let me do every single thing I wanted to do for my shooting style. So that I absolutely love. And I was, this is, we would be replacing my 300S. So I had a Nikon 300S, I replace it in two seconds. All right, onto the lens. This lens is crazy sharp. So it is not really a nighttime lens, I would say because it goes from F4.5 to F5.6. So it has a variable aperture. Now here's the thing. I shot, this was the lens I had on here at 2500 ISO. Just for comparison's sake, I switched this lens, same exact lens off here, and I put it on my D4, and I just came out, shot a few shots. This lens on a D4, 
versus this lens on here, you can definitely see a difference in clarity at high ISO. No doubt about it. Side by side, it's definitely sharper. This lens though, as just as a lens, is absolutely fantastic. So here's the thing, especially for hockey, this actually fits through the hole in the hockey glass. So you can put this through where you can't get a 300 through, you can't get a 400 through, this 400 goes through. So what didn't I like about the lens? Gonna sound silly again, the only thing I could really crack on about the lens was, it's kinda heavy. It actually feels, now, it feels good in your hands. It like, just to hold it, feels good. But after a while, it gets kinda heavy. So I would say that. Other than that, great response, sharp shots, good autofocus. All the way around, I like the whole thing. Oh, by the way, I didn't mention this about the camera. The camera's focus, I think, overall is better. It went from 39 points to 51, I think, and uh, much better. Just the focus, the whole nine yards on the body. Best DX camera I think they've ever made. And this for the money. Now, let's talk about the money, last thing. So the, this is around 1,200 bucks. Amazing deal, we'll just forget about that. This is a little expensive, it's $2,600. Everybody I talked to that saw it at the workshop this weekend was like, Wow, 2,600 bucks, but they all said the same thing. Yeah, but for a 400, if you think about this, for a good 400, right? A 400 F 2.8 or a faster 400, you're talking $10,000. Even a 300 is five or $6,000. So this is a fraction of that. I think one of the reasons why people are a little bit like, wow, it's $2,600 is because it's fairly small. I think that people think it has to be a very large lens to be an expensive lens and all, but I think that's the beauty of this, is that it's not very large. It's pretty small, it's pretty compact, it's pretty lightweight. Also, they completely redid the autofocus system. The autofocus in this is fast, because Nikon did make an 80 to 400 before, but the focus was kind of old technology, way outdated. This one's beautiful. I thought the response was great. I had no trouble tracking the action with it. Worked great on either camera body, of course, a little bit better uh, all the way around on a D4. But on this one, it makes a really, really nice, really, really nice addition to the D7100. So as a sports unit, oh, this is crazy. Um, but if you just are interested in the lens itself, absolute, super crisp, super sharp, Good auto response, I love them both. Anyway, there's a quick look at the pluses and minuses of both of the brand new Nikon D7100 and the 80 to 400 F4.5 to 5.6.